The men and moments that made the Minnesota Twins the Big 50. Number 14, Bob Allison. Bob Allison was one of several fully formed in their prime Senator stars who moved with the team to Minnesota in 1961. He'd won the Rookie of the Year award in 1959, smacking 30 homers to beat out future teammate Jim Perry, and his sophomore production remained solid despite failing to match his freshman excellence. He arrived in Minnesota at age 26 as one of the best right-handed sluggers in baseball, although he was second on his own team in that category behind Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew. Allison, much like Killebrew, struck out a ton for the 1960s, but made up for it with huge power and a lot of walks. In his first five years with the Twins, he averaged 30 homers and 90 walks per 150 games at a time when pitching dominated so much across MLB that the mound was lowered the following year in 68. During that five-year span of 1961 to 65, the only American leaguers with more home runs, which was 148, and more walks of 442 than Allison were Killebrew, Mickey Mantle, Rocky Colavito, and Norm Cash. That stretch included two of the best back-to-back -back years in Twins history, as Allison led the league in OPS in 1963 and then followed it up in 1964 by boosting his OPS nearly 50 points higher. He made the all-star team in both seasons, but strangely enough, finished as 15th and 23rd in the MVP voting. In particular, his 1963 season, when Allison hit 35 home runs, drew 90 walks, and led the league in both OPS and runs scored while playing excellent defense in right field, is perhaps the most underappreciated great season in Twins history. Allison led the league in OPS and wins above replacement, yet 14 players, including Twins teammate Killebrew, Earl Batty, and Camila Pasqual, received more votes for the MVP than he did. Yankees second baseman Rob Bobby Richardson, who hit 265 with three homers and an OPS nearly 200 points lower, finished higher in the balloting. War in 1963 had an entirely different meaning and even now, common statistics like on-base percentage and slugging percentage weren't widely cited. But, well, Allison was robbed. And then it happened again the next season. Allison hit 287, with 32 homers and a 9.57 OPS that ranked third in the league behind only Mickey Mantle and Book Powell. He joined Mantle as the AL's only hitters with an on-base percentage above 400 and ranked fourth in slugging percentage. For all of that, he finished 23rd in the MVP voting behind, among others, another sub 650 OPS season from Richardson and multiple fellow sluggers who weren't within 100 points of his OPS. Allison put together a three-year run from 62 to 64 in which he led the league in runs scored while ranking second in homers in OPS, third in walks, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage, fourth in RBIs while playing very good defense in the outfield. Add it all up, and Allison led the entire American League in war from 62 to 64, ahead of Killebrew, Mantle, Brooks Robinson, Al Kaline, Carl Yastrzemski, and all the other household names from that era. Allison simply had to settle for being an after-the-fact superstar. For all of the slugging he did, when Twins fans think of Allison, the most likely memory is his spectacular catch in Game 2 of the 65 World Series with a runner on first base and no outs in the fifth inning of a 0-0 game. Dodgers second baseman Jim Lefevre lined a Jim Cott pitch down the left field line. It looked like a sure extra base hit and likely an RBI, but Allison covered a tremendous amount of ground before making a sliding backhanded catch. Cott went in to throw a one-run complete game, beating Sandy Koufax that day. 
Allison played fullback at the University of Kansas before signing with the Senators for $4,000 and was massive by 1960s standards at six foot four and 220 pounds. But he had enough range to log more than 1,600 innings as a center fielder. He primarily played right field and left field, where he combined outstanding instincts with a strong arm. Perhaps it's fitting that Allison's defense is etched in the minds of so many fans by way of his World Series grab as being an asset in the field separated him from many other sluggers. He's also a smart, efficient base runner, swiping 40 bags while being caught just nine times between 62 and 66 and ranking eighth in Twins history with 41 career triples. For a man Allison's size, and for a hitter with such prodigious home run, walk, and strikeout totals, having a skill set that also included plus defense and base running was a rarity that may help explain why his all-around value was so often overlooked. He was an all-star caliber player for a decade, ranking among the Twins' top 10 in homers, runs, and RBIs. Sport Magazine writer Leonard Schechter jokingly said of Allison in 1964, quote, anyone can be successful in baseball if he follows the path of Bob Allison. All you have to do is be 6'4", strong as a weightlifter, handsome as a shirt model, have the personality of an honor graduate of Dale Carnegie, and also work your head off, unquote. Jim Cott, the beneficiary of the great catch in 65, described Allison as having, quote, the ideal body he was a hard-nosed player. He was always so fit. Everyone always marveled at his condition, unquote. While playing in an old-timers game in the Metrodome in 1987, just 13 years after his retirement, Allison began to note coordination problems. Within a few years, his health had deteriorated to the point that swinging a golf club became impossible. And Allison was diagnosed with the neurodegenerative disorder, ataxia. Not yet 60, he retired from an executive role with Coca-Cola, telling the Arizona Republic in 1991, my coordination is gone. I simply can't walk. I can't talk and I can't write. I simply can't do anything. Allison died in 1995 at the age of 60. His legacy lives on with the Bob Allison Ataxia Research Center at the University of Minnesota, where cerebellum disorders, like the one that cut his life short, are studied and treated. Many of his former Twins teammates, including Jim Cott, helped raise money for the center. Bob Allison, number 14 in the Minnesota Twins Big 50.